So now let's walk through this code as we display the list of records and then edit one of the records. And we'll see what's different between this and our previous scripts. So we call the data administration page function like we see in our products.php file, and we pass it this list of options. I'm gonna jump back to crud.php. In this first part, what we're doing is getting the path from the URL. Now remember, we're routing everything through our index.php file. So this get path here actually aligns with the URL. And so we set this to the path in our options array. So we're adding to the options that we pass to this. And as the description says here, we're gonna use this to make sure that when we submit a form, it loads up the same page that rendered the form to begin with. Next, we initialize our content variable, and then we switch based on the action. So this first time that the page loads, we're not going to have an action here. So what we're going to do is display the data list and we're gonna pass it the list of options again. If we scroll up to the top for data list here, we have some comments here. Now it's good practice when you use an options or settings variable like this to list out the possible keys that can be used and what those keys expect in terms of a variable. So for example, the table is the name of a variable. That's going to be a string. The display columns, it is a set of key value pairs with column name, column title. So each one of these describes the type of data that can be passed into it. Because options right here is not very descriptive, we don't know exactly what can be passed through here. Comments like this can be tremendously useful. So a quick note, all of our functions that we reviewed earlier start with data. So this is replacing where we would normally use admin underscore product or admin underscore user. So data is sort of the generic form of the same naming convention. Okay, so in this function, we initialize our table rows variable. This is gonna be where we load in the rows that we're going to display. Next, we do a MySQL query. So this is the first point where we have to generalize things because we don't know unless we look at these options, what table we're supposed to pull from and how we're supposed to sort the data. So we select all from, and then we're passing in our table. We're going to order by, and then we pass in the default sort column and we set ascending. Now this is another place where we could add another option to our list of options to allow the user to order by descending, for example. Next, we're going to loop through the results. Now with each one of these rows, we could have pulled in more columns than we're actually going to display because we use this select all. So we have to use the set of options that we passed for the display columns parameter to determine what we're going to list in that list of data. Another thing that we're going to have to do is construct the row that includes the labels for each one of the columns. So we're gonna do that right here. So we're checking to see if the table header exists. If it doesn't, what we're going to do is build it. We're going to initialize the table header variable, and then we're going to loop through each one of the display columns that we set as the options. We're going to pull out the name as the column title, or call underscore title here, and then we'll add it to the table header, wrapping it in th table header tags. Finally, we'll wrap those table header tags in a table row here, and we'll also add columns for edit, and delete. So this takes care of dynamically building that table header. Now we have to build each one of the rows. So we're going to loop through each of the display columns again. This time we need to pull out both the key and the value in this array because we need the key, which is the name of the field, in order to accurately reference it in the row array. So we have the column name here. Now we're passing the field name to the row array so if we look at our products.php file for an example, and we look at the display columns, the first time this runs, the column name will be PID. I'm gonna jump back to crud.php. So at this point, we have one table cell that has a number, and then we're going to loop through again because we have another display column. If we go back to products.php, we'll see the next one is title, and then the next one is price. So if we go back to crud.php, this loops through, adds the title, loops through one more time and adds the price. Now that we've generated all the data for that table row, we're going to add additional table cells here for the edit and delete buttons. Now this is where we use that path that we set at the beginning of this processing. This will make sure that when we click either of these links, we get routed back to the page that we're currently on. 
And then we're also passing this ID parameter here, which is the unique identifier for this record. And the way that we get that is by passing the ID column in our options array, which for products is PID, and then we grab that item from the row. So this is going to read row PID. And we do the same thing for our delete. Next, we wrap table row tags around this data and add it to the table rows string here. So by the time this loops through, we'll have looped through each one of the items inside of the database and added it as a row to the table rows string. Finally, we want to output the full table along with a link to add one of these records. So here's the link to add. We use this path again and we pass it through our URL function. Now again, this URL function is here because we want to make sure this path works even if we're in a subfolder or not in a subfolder. And then we say add, and then we use this item name here. In the case of products, this is going to say product. And then we build our table by adding the table header and the table rows and wrapping the table tags around it. And then we 